All right, so um, here's a little intro to synthetic division, particularly using it to determine whether a whether something is a linear factor of a polynomial. So here we have a polynomial um, x to th y equals x to the third plus 4x th squared minus 11x minus 30. Um, just a a sum of um, expressions with a variable x raised to um, whole number of powers that are positive or zero. So x to the third, x to the squared, you know, x to the zero, x to the one. It's not like x to the one half, i.e. the square root of x. Uh, it's not like x to the negative fourth. Those would not count as polynomials. Um, so uh, we want to we want to figure out what the roots of this polynomial are. And one way to do that is is um, to break it up into its its linear factors. So if you can actually factor it algebraically into like x plus five times blah 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 times blah blah blah, right? If you can factor it into those linear factors, you can set each one equal to zero and solve for x. Okay. Um, well, uh, there is another way. Um, if it's difficult or impossible to factor a polynomial, but you have a general sense of what would be a good guess for its roots, uh, for example, maybe you graph it. This is what I recommend. In my school of thought, first thing you do, pop it into the graphing calculator and get some candidates for roots. Um, um, so it looks like this 0 or root is, is 3. So looks like three is a root, which means that x minus three is probably one of these factors, x minus three. Because if you were to set x minus three equal to zero, what would you get? You'd get x equals three. You know, add three to both sides, right? So it looks like one of the roots is three. So uh, it looks like x minus three should be a factor of. Um, this polynomial. Now, synthetic division is a way of determining whether something is a factor of a polynomial. Okay, so, uh, but let's let's go. Um, let's just back up. What's a factor? Let's say I have the number 32. Well, I want to test whether the number 4 is a factor of 32. Uh, can I multiply 4 by something to get 32? I don't know. Well, one way to test that is just to divide 32 by 4. If I get a remainder, uh, it's not a factor, right? Um, well, 32 divided by 4 is 8. 8 times 4 is 32. Boom. I don't get a remainder. So I know that 4 is a factor of 32. In fact, 4 times 8 is 32. So uh, that's all we're doing here, except instead of 32, we've got this gigantic polynomial. And instead of 4, uh, we've got a possible uh, linear factor. Right, so here's the method of synthetic division. Um, Alright, I'm, I've got, I'm going to eyeball this graph and look, see that, um, well, it looks like 3, uh, negative 2, and negative 5 are roots. And I'm just going to use synthetic division to test each one. If I divide this polynomial by x minus three, and I get a remainder of zero. Boom! It's a factor. So how do you how do you actually do that? Well, you set up your little L shape thing like this. You put the root that you want to test out here, and then you put the coefficients of your terms um, up here. So make sure that your terms are in descending order of degree. So cubed, then squared, then to the first, and then to the zero. Or if it's a fifth de degree polynomial, put your term with the x to the fifth uh, before the term with the x to the fourth, before the term uh, x to the third, etc. Make sure it's in descending order uh, first. Um, okay, and then write the coefficients here. So coefficients are 1, um, 4, negative 11, and negative 30, oops, and negative 30. Step one is I just bring this guy down. Uh, one, 
Okay, so here's the pattern. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract, I get 1. Sorry, add uh, 7. 7 times 3 is 21. Add down the column. Uh, 21 plus negative 11 is what? 10. 10 times 3 is 30. Uh, negative 30 plus 30 is 0. Okay, that last term is going to be the remainder. So I have a remainder of 0 for this root of 3. Therefore, x minus 3 is a factor. Okay, uh, so 3, 3 is a root. That works, and x minus 3 is a factor. So let's, let's check the other two, uh, just to practice synthetic division. Uh, we want to check the root negative 2. Uh, let's put our coefficients, bring down the first one. OK, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Add 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Add 11, uh, negative 11 plus negative 4 is negative 15. Negative 15 times negative 2 is positive 30. Negative 30 plus 30 is 0. OK, negative 2 is a root, which means x plus 2 is a linear factor. Good. All right, uh, let's not check that one. Let's check 7. Um, just I'll show you an example of where you'd get a remainder. 7, we're going we're gonna to check 7. Uh, 1, 4, negative 11, and negative 30 are our coefficients. Bring down the 1. 1 times 7 is 7. Add 11. 11 times 7 is 77. Uh, minus 11 is, what is that, 66. 66 times 7. I have no idea. 462. 462 minus 30 is whatever that is. 432. A gigantic remainder, right? So 7 is not a root. x minus 7 is not a linear factor, for example. All right, so that's basically how you use synthetic division. Um, you know, as you can imagine, there'd be an infinite number of numbers you could try um, for uh, as possible roots if you're just pulling numbers out of a hat. Um, so you need a kind of set of numbers that you're going to try. So uh, you could graph it and then eyeball it and see if you get, um, see if, you know, come up with a list of whole number roots that could potentially work. You know, you might have a root that's 2.17888, you know, repeating or whatever. Um, this is not for that. Uh, and there's other ways to come up with a list of candidate uh, roots. But start with your candidates. Use synthetic division. If you get a zero remainder, that means that uh, the number was a root of the polynomial.